Good evening, Dr. Phil here. Today we'll be discussing on proximal sciatic nerve block landmark techniques using peripheral nerve stimulation and ultrasound techniques in the second section. Indications For anesthesia for all lower limb surgeries, blockage of components of the lumbar plexus may be necessary when anesthesia of the entire lower extremity is desired. Distal blocks are preferred when feasible, for example, popliteal sciatic nerve block or ankle blocks. Another indication is analgesia for lower limb surgeries. Contraindications for sciatic nerve block Local infection at the site of needle insertion, coagulopathy, central or peripheral nervous system disorders, and local anesthesia allergies. Complications of sciatic nerve block Infection Strict asepsis is a must. Hematoma To reduce risk of hematoma formation, avoid multiple needle passes, large needle diameter, and tohi needles if possible. Vascular puncture To reduce risk of vascular puncture, avoid deep needle insertion to avoid pelvic vessels. Local anesthetic toxicity Avoid exceeding the maximum dose. Avoid intravascular injection. Frequent aspiration prior to LA injection should be done. High incidence of false negatives from aspiration check for blood as the insulated needle is long. Risk of LA toxicity increases if concurrent lumbar plexus or femoral nerve block is performed. Nerve injury. Avoid multiple needle passes. Advance needle slowly when twitches of the gluteus stops to avoid impaling the sciatic nerve. Do not inject LA when stimulation is obtained at less than 0.2 mA at 0.1 seconds, opening injection pressure exceeding 15 PSI, and the patient complains of severe pain. Short bevel needles should be used. Use ultrasound guidance whenever possible. The sciatic nerve has poor intrinsic blood supply. Thus, avoid use of adrenaline-containing solutions to reduce risk of neuronal ischemia. Pressure necrosis of the heel. Use heel padding, frequent repositioning, meticulous care of the insensate extremity. Perforation of pelvic organs. Exercise caution when directing the needle medially. Anesthesia of the pudental nerve. The pudental nerve may be anesthetized by parasacral nerve block due to the diffusion of the injected local anesthesia. Inform patients of this potential transient problem. Sciatic nerve ischemia can be caused by injection of the local anesthetic within the sciatic nerve sheath, adrenaline, and a tonicae over the site of injection. Posterior approach of Labat Introduction This approach has been described by Victor Pochette in 1920 and Gaston Labat in 1923. Compared to other approaches, this approach reliably blocks the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh has faster onset, higher success rate, less LA requirements, the patient has to be turned to the side and the leg has to be flexed, and this may not be feasible in some patients. Take note of LA toxicity, as the area of injection is highly vascular. Nearby vessels includes the inferior gluteal artery, inferior gluteal vein, pudental artery and pudental vein. Important landmarks includes the PSIS, the greater trochanter GT and the sacrohiatus SH. Technique General measures kindly refer to the video on peripheral nerve stimulation in peripheral nerve blocks. Patient position, lateral recumbent, block side up, top knee flexed at 90 degrees, the hip flexed, long axis of the femur forms a continuous line from the PSIS to the greater trochanter. Needle insertion point Draw a line connecting the PSIS and the greater trochanter. Mark the midpoint of this line. Drop a perpendicular 5 cm below the line. Draw the second line connecting the GT and the sacral hiatus. The above mentioned perpendicular intersects this line. This intersection point is the needle insertion point. Use standard aseptic measures and exercise the skin with subcutaneous lidocaine. Needle of choice. 100 to 150 mm 21 gauge insulated short bevel stimulating needle inserted perpendicular to the skin. With the nerve stimulator attached to the needle, setting at 1.5 mA, 0.1 ms 2 Hz pulses, 
the desired motor response upon needle advancement. Advance the needle until motor response is elicited or bone is contacted. Typically, motor response is elicited at a depth of 50 to 100 mm. Tibial nerve lies medially in the sciatic bundle. Plantar flexion of the foot and toes occur with tibial nerve stimulation. Tibial nerve stimulation results in higher success rates in sciatic nerve block. Peroneal nerve lies laterally in the sciatic bundle. The response is dorsiflexion or eversion of the foot. Ignore direct gluteal muscle stimulation or hamstring stimulation. Double injection technique. Identify both sciatic components via peripheral nerve stimulation and block both tibial and peroneal nerve. There is increased success rates for double injection technique at 45 minutes compared to single injection techniques, 75 to 100% versus 55 to 80%. Double injection technique provides quicker onset of sciatic nerve block. However, there is increased time for performance. LA injection. Manipulate the needle until the desired motor response is seen at a stimulating current of between 0.3 and 0.5 mA. Disconnect the syringe prior to LA injection to exclude passive reflux of blood. If no blood on aspiration, inject LA, 5 mL aliquots of LA, for example levobupivacaine 0.5%, to 20 to 30 mL in total. Aspirate regularly to exclude intravascular injection. ED95 is 17 mL. Next, we move on to the anterior approach. Introduction the anterior approach has been described by Beck in 1963. Advantages This can be performed with the patient in supine position who are unable to adopt other positions due to conditions such as painful fractures. The sciatic nerve emerges from the greater sciatic foramen to lie between the ischial tuberosity and greater trochanter of the femur. Before it passes down behind the femur, it is accessible medial to it just below the lesser trochanter. Disadvantages it is uncomfortable for the patient as the stimulating needle passes through significant muscle bulk. The sciatic nerve is not accessible below the lesser trochanter in 40% of cases if the knee is in neutral position. However, access to the sciatic nerve can be improved by internally rotating the thigh. Lesser trochanteric obstruction can be avoided by adjusting the needle insertion point more distally to that described by back. 15% of patients has a sciatic nerve that lies immediately posterior to the femur at this level of needle insertion, so it is inaccessible to the anterior approach. The posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh is less reliably blocked compared to the Labatt's approach. Vessel puncture. Femoral artery lies just medial to the needle trajectory. Risk of nerve injury. The femoral nerve lies just medial to the needle trajectory. Important landmarks. The ASIS, greater trochanter, and pubic tubercle. Technique. General measures kindly refer to the video on peripheral nerve stimulation in peripheral nerve blocks. Patient position is supine. Needle insertion point. Draw a first line connecting the ASIS to the pubic tubercle. Draw the second line, which is a parallel line to the first line from the greater trochanter. Draw the third line which is a perpendicular line from the first line at the junction of the middle third and medial third. The needle insertion point is the point where the third line crosses the second line. Use standard aseptic measures and anesthetize the skin with subcutaneous lidocaine. Needle of choice is 100 to 150 mm, 21 gauge insulated short bevel stimulating needle inserted perpendicular to the skin. Attach a nerve stimulator to the needle Set at 1.5 mA, 0.1 ms, 2 Hz pulses. Desired motor response upon needle advancement. Needle course passes between the sartorius laterally and the rectus femoris medially. The sciatic nerve at this level sits immediately below the lesser trochanter, posterior to the adductor magnus. With the non-dominant hand under the buttocks, place a finger on the ischial tuberosity Aim the stimulating needle 1 to 2 cm lateral to this finger. Advance the needle aiming slightly laterally until motor response is elicited or the femur is contacted. Typically, motor response is elicited at a depth of 80 to 100 mm. The tibial nerve lies medially in the sciatic bundle. Stimulation of the tibial nerve results in plantar flexion of the foot or toes. 
tibial nerve stimulation results in higher success rates in sciatic nerve block. The peroneal nerve lies laterally in the sciatic bundle. Stimulation of the peroneal nerve results in dorsiflexion or eversion of the foot. If bone is encountered, redirect the needle medially, advance a further 2-5 to cm. Inject LA as described in the Labatt's approach. Next is the lateral approach. Introduction. Advantages. The lateral approach can be performed with the patient in supine position who are unable to adopt other positions due to conditions such as painful fractures. There is lower risk of vessel puncture as the vascular bundle is medial and anterior to the nerve. There is faster onset time than lateral popliteal block. The sciatic nerve can be blocked at any point along the length of the time. Disadvantages. Tonique pain can occur as the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh is not blocked. Important landmarks include the greater trochanter. Technique General measures kindly refer to the video on peripheral nerve stimulation in peripheral nerve blocks, patient position supine, needle insertion point, draw a line from the posterior border of the greater trochanter, descending along the length of the femur distally, the high approach and the level of the ischial tuberosity, mid thigh approach, needle insertion halfway along the thigh. Use standard aseptic measures, anesthetize the skin with subcutaneous lidocaine, needle of choice is 50 to 100 mm, 21 gauge insulated short bevel stimulating needle, inserted perpendicular to the skin. Nerve stimulator attached to the needle, setting at 1.5 mA, 0.1 ms, 2 Hz pulses. Desired motor response upon needle advancement, Advance the needle aiming slightly anteriorly until motor response is elicited or femur contacted. If bone is encountered, redirect posteriorly and advance a further 2 to 5 cm. Typically, motor response is elicited at a depth of 30 to 80 mm or up to 100 mm with a high approach. The tibial nerve lies medially in the sciatic bundle. Plantar flexion of the foot or toes occur with tibial nerve stimulation. Tibial nerve stimulation results in higher success rates in sciatic nerve block. The peroneal nerve lies laterally in the sciatic bundle and stimulation results in dorsiflexion or eversion of the foot. The peroneal component is usually stimulated first. Internal rotation of the thigh helps to achieve tibial nerve stimulation. LA injection is as described in Labatt's approach. Next, we move on to posterior subgluteus approach described by D. Benedetto, also known as the infragluteal approach, the needle causes at the caudate margin of this muscle. Advantages It is less painful than Labatt's approach. Disadvantages Nerve blockade of the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh is less reliable compared to Labatt's approach. Important landmarks include the greater trochanter and ischial tuberosity. Technique General measures kindly refer to the video on peripheral nerve stimulation in peripheral nerve blocks. Patient position Lateral recumbent position with the block side up, top knee flexed at 90 degrees, hip flexed. Long axis of femur forms a continuous line from the PSIS to the greater trochanter. Needle insertion point. Draw a line connecting the greater trochanter and the ischial tuberosity. Mark 4 cm distal to the midpoint of this line. This point corresponds to a palpable or visible longitudinal groove formed by the lateral edge of the long head of the biceps femoris. Use standard aseptic measures and exercise the skin with subcutaneous lidocaine. Needle of choice is 50 to 100 mm 21 gauge insulated short bevel stimulating needle inserted perpendicular to the skin. Attach the nerve stimulator to the needle setting at 1.5 mA 0.1 ms 2 Hz pulses. The desired motor response upon needle advancement Typically, motor response is elicited at a depth of 30 to 60 mm. Advance the needle until motor response is elicited or bone is contacted. The tibial nerve lies medially in the sciatic bundle. Plantar flexion of the foot or toes occurs with tibial nerve stimulation. Tibial nerve stimulation results in higher success rates in sciatic nerve block. The peroneal nerve lies laterally in the sciatic bundle and stimulation results in dorsiflexion or eversion of the foot. LA injection Proceed as described in Labatt's approach. Inferior approach. Introduction. 
It is first described by Raj in 1975, Advantages. It can be performed with the patient in supine position who are unable to adopt other positions. The sciatic nerve is more superficially located in this approach, thus the block is easier to perform and learn. Disadvantages. Blockade of the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh is less reliable than Labatt's approach and assistance is required to support the leg. Important landmarks include the GT and the IT. Technique. For general measures, kindly refer to the video on peripheral nerve stimulation in peripheral nerve blocks, patient position, unilateral lithotomy, patient supine with the limb to be blocked lifted up by flexing the hip and knee to 90 degrees, needle insertion point, draw a line connecting the GT to the IT, mark its midpoint. This midpoint corresponds to a palpable visible longitudinal groove formed by the lateral edge of the long head of the biceps femoris. Use standard aseptic measures and anesthetize the skin with subcutaneous lidocaine. Needle of choice is 50 to 100 mm, 21 gauge insulated short bevel stimulating needle inserted perpendicular to the skin with slight medial intent. Attach the nerve stimulator to the needle, setting at 1.5 mA, 0.1 ms, 2 Hz pulses. The desired motor response upon needle advancement. Typically, motor response is elicited at the depth of 40 to 80 mm. Plantar flexion of the foot or toes occurs with tibial nerve stimulation. Tibial nerve stimulation results in higher success rates in this approach as well. The peroneal nerve lies laterally in the sciatic bundle and stimulation results in dorsiflexion or eversion of the foot. Ignore gluteal muscle contractions arising from direct muscle stimulation. Proceed with LA injection as described in Labatt's approach. Interpreting responses to nerve stimulation. For the posterior approach, response observed, local twitches of the gluteus, interpretation, direct stimulation of gluteus, issue, needle placement is too shallow, correction, advanced needle deeper. Response observed, needle encounters bone plus gluteal twitches not elicited. Interpretation, needle placed close to lateral aspect of sacrum or caudal aspect of iliac bone. Issue, needle placement is too superior or too medial. Correction, withdraw needle and redirect needle slightly laterally and caudally. Response observed, needle encounters bone, sciatic twitches evoked. Interpretation, Needle tip is at the hip joint or ischial bone and has missed the plane of the sciatic nerve. Issue. Needle placement is too lateral or too medial. Correction. Withdraw the needle and redirect needle slightly medially or laterally by 5 to 10 degrees. Response observed. Hamstring twitches elicited. Interpretation. Needle is stimulating the main trunk of the sciatic nerve. Issue. No issues. Branches supplying the hamstrings are contained in the sciatic nerve sheath at this level. Correction? None. Accept response and inject LA. Response observed. No elicited twitches or bone contact despite having the needle deeply placed up to 10 cm. Interpretation? Needle has passed through the sciatic notch. Issue. Needle placement is too inferior. Correction. Withdraw needle and redirect needle slightly laterally or cephalate. Response observed. Paresthesia of the genitals. Interpretation. Needle is stimulating the pudendal nerve. Issue. Needle placement is too inferior and medial. Correction. Withdraw needle and redirect needle slightly laterally or cephalate. Interpreting responses to nerve stimulation during the anterior approach. Response observed. Patella twitch aka twitches of quadriceps. Interpretation. Stimulation of the branches of the femoral nerve. Issue. Needle placement is too shallow. Correction. Advance the needle deeper. Response observed. Local twitches at the femoral crease area. Interpretation. Needle is stimulating the iliopsoas or pectineus directly. Issue. Needle placement is too superior. Correction. Withdraw needle and reassess landmarks. Response observed. Hamstring twitches elicited. Interpretation. Branches of the sciatic nerve to the hamstring muscle or the hamstring muscle themselves are stimulated. Issue. Unable to be certain whether the needle is close to the sciatic nerve. Correction. Withdraw needle and redirect needle slightly medially or laterally by 5 to 10 degrees. Response observed. 
No elicited twitches or bone contact despite having the needle deeply placed up to 12 to 15 centimeters. Interpretation, needle is too medial. Correction, withdraw needle and redirect it slightly laterally. Response, observed, twitches of calf, foot or toes. Interpretation, sciatic nerve is stimulated. The needle is correctly placed. Accept the response and inject LA. Proximal sciatic nerve block ultrasound techniques. Comparing ultrasound versus peripheral nerve stimulation techniques. The limitations of ultrasound techniques. Ultrasound visualization of the proximal sciatic nerve is often difficult due to the depth of the sciatic nerve from the skin, anisotropic nature of the nerve, and large overlying muscle mass. Although it is difficult, it is possible to visualize the sciatic nerve throughout its length from its subgluteal location to the popliteal fossa where it bifurcates, where the best images are reported to be 7 to 11 cm distal to the gluteal crease. Limited evidence exists to suggest that ultrasound improves the procedural time or block quality except in lateral mid-femoral approaches. Advantages Muscle group contraction can be avoided, for example in trauma patients during ultrasound techniques. Ultrasound is valuable in situations where peripheral nerve stimulation response is unreliable, such as in peripheral vascular disease, diabetes, neuropathy, and nerve ischemia. Available approaches Subgluteal, infragluteal, lateral, or anterior. The subgluteal approach The subgluteal space is the area between the posterior surface of the gluteus maximus and the anterior surfaces of the quadratus femoris, gamelus or obturator internus muscles, depending on the level. In 70% of cases, the following can be blocked successfully, the sciatic nerve and the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh. Infragluteal approach. The sciatic nerve is blocked at the area caudal to the inferior border of the gluteus maximus. At this level, it is difficult to block the posterior cutaneous nerve of the thigh successfully as it has moved out of close proximity from the sciatic nerve. The lateral or anterior approaches has no clear advantages other than supine patient positioning. Subgluteal approach Preliminary scan Patient position, lateral seams position with operative side up, probe position, transverse position across the buttock midway between the IT medially and GT laterally, adjust angulation, rotation and tilt to obtain the best images. Identify structures the gluteus maximus is superficial, quadratus femoris is deep, sciatic nerve is bright, hyperechoic, oval or flattened structure between gluteus maximus and quadratus femoris. The inferior gluteal vessels are seen medial to the sciatic nerve. To confirm nerve identity, scan the nerve in a long axis view. It is the only tubular structure present in the buttock and posterior thigh. Ultrasound settings, probe, low frequency, less than 5 MHz, curvilinear C60 in thick individuals, linear broadband probe in thin individuals. Settings, multi-beam or abdomen or general penetration. Depth, 4 to 8 cm, needle of choice, 100 mm of choice. Technique, standard aseptic measures and exercise the skin with subcutaneous lidocaine. In-plane approach from lateral to medial is recommended. Peripheral nerve stimulation may help identify the nerve. Aim to surround the nerve with 10 to 20 mL of local anesthetic. Injection of LA in the subgluteal space leads to filling of the space and circumferential spread of LA around the nerve. Avoid infragluteal vessels. Choice of local anesthetic. 20 to 25 mL of LA is usually sufficient. LA used in proximal sciatic nerve block. 3% 2 chloroprocaine. Onset 10 to 15 minutes. Anesthesia. 2 hours, analgesia, 2.5 hours. 1.5% mepivacin, onset time, 10 to 15 minutes, anesthesia, 4 to 5 hours, analgesia, 5 to 8 hours. 2% lidocaine, onset time, 10 to 20 minutes, anesthesia, 5 to 6 hours, analgesia, 5 to 8 hours. 0.5% ropivacin, onset time, 15 to 20 minutes, anesthesia, 6 to 12 hours, Analgesia 6 to 24 hours. 0.75% ropivacin, onset time 10 to 15 minutes, 
anesthesia 8 to 12 hours, analgesia 8 to 24 hours. 0.5% levobupivacin, onset 15 to 30 minutes, anesthesia 8 to 16 hours, analgesia 10 to 48 hours. Infragluteal approach. Preliminary scan. Patient position prone, probe position, transverse orientation across the proximal thigh. Identify structures. The sciatic nerve is most superficial, about 5 cm, distal to the gluteal crease. It is most easily visualized by ultrasound, between 7 and 11 cm, distal to the gluteal crease. Lateral to the midline. The lateral border of the biceps femoris is seen, which covers the sciatic nerve as it passes from the lateral side of the leg to insert medially on the ischial tuberosity. Distally, the sciatic nerve lies under the belly of the long head of the biceps femoris. Medial to the midline, the semitendinosus and semimembranosus are seen. These three muscles form tendons that insert into the ischial tuberosity. They are covered by the inferior margin of the gluteus maximus at this level. The sciatic nerve always lies deep and laterally, although it looks similar to the muscles. Ultrasound settings, probe curvilinear C60, low frequency in obese patients. The linear probe can be used in thin individuals. Settings, multi-beam, general penetration. Depth, 3 to 6 cm, plane, transverse. Needle choice, 50 to 100 mm of choice. Technique, standard aseptic measures, and exercise the skin with subcutaneous lidocaine. The in-plane approach from lateral to medial is recommended. Peripheral nerve stimulation may help identify the nerve. Place the needle tip immediately adjacent to the sciatic nerve between the adductor magnus muscle and biceps femoris. After careful aspiration, inject 10 to 20 mL of LA to surround the nerve circumferentially. These are my references. Thank you.